Hi, welcome back to Brooks's Bass Corner and my Essential Bass album series, looking back at albums that, in my view, are essential listening for any bass player. It might be an album that sold millions of copies worldwide and thrust the bassist onto megastardom, or it might be an album that didn't sell particularly well, but cut a niche for a particular bassist to propel the band or artist onto greater things. Or it might just be a great album in terms of the bass performance. Either way, I think these albums deserve your attention, and perhaps by watching this video you might be intrigued to check out the album for yourself. And who knows, maybe it will excite you as much as it excited me when I first discovered it. Sadly, due to copyright restrictions, I can't use audio examples from the album, but where suitable, I will indicate particular songs and their timestamp that I'm referring to. If you enjoy the video, please hit the subscribe button below. Hit the notification bell so that you receive notifications when I post up new videos and please give the video a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you have any comments regarding the album or the review, leave them below and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. On with this episode's album, it's Marcus Miller's The Sun Don't Lie. Released in 1993, this album marked the transition from R&B soul man and session ace through to Miles Davis's Talisman in the mid 80s and like a butterfly, the final development into a multi-instrumentalist, producer, arranger, composer and solo artist in his own right. This album also marked the start of a series of albums that continues today, that entwine and pull together the many and varied aspects of Marcus's musical tastes and influences. Each album featuring an array of the great and the good from all musical genres, with the likes of Wayne Shorter, Omar Hakim, Vernon Reed, Lenny White and David Sanborn to name a few, Marcus created an album that opened the door to the next stage of his career. Combining elements of R&B, soul, jazz, funk and a touch of rock in places, Marcus brought to the table an album of many colours, all served up from an array of basses. His trusty 77 Fender Jazz that replaced his stolen bass covers the most ground, while his Sadowski and Federa basses can also be heard, as can a modulus fretless with its almost glass-like fretless tone. Around this time, Marcus was heavily into his SWR amplification, although he is known as a player that likes to go direct to the desk, while his basses would have been strung with DR fat beam steel strings, 045 gauge to 105, particularly on the fretted basses for a thick crisp slap tone and a rounded finger style tone with plenty of bite to give his tone some edge. From the opening melodic finger style passage of Panther, you know you're in for something special, and the opening track doesn't disappoint, featuring a mix of finger style melodies and slap grooves, alongside some fine solos from Dean Brown and Marcus, the bass solos incorporating several of Marcus's signature phrases and playing techniques, including his root octave slide at five minutes 20. Steve Lund is a tip of the hat to Stevie Wonder and is a laid back number, it couldn't be anything else sandwiched between tracks one and three, that illustrates Marcus's use of the bass almost as a vocal instrument. In fact, he has often remarked that music is a language to communicate and you have to build your vocabulary to communicate fluently, but your instrument is your voice. Rampage is a standard Marcus funkathon and features plucked chords, strums and tight finger style melodies all in rapid succession. Marcus certainly rampages through the track. It also features some tasteful trumpet passages from the late Miles Davis. The title track is a mixture of fretless and fretted slap passages. The fretless tone bubbles along with a warm tonal character before switching over from 2 minutes 13, underpinning the lively piano and steel drum accompaniment. Scoop has become one of Marcus's signature slap pieces with its instantly recognisable melody and the interweaving between the bass clarinet, alto saxophone and bass. Particularly noticeable are the bent pluck notes that give the bass solo fluidity and movement. The first of two tributes to Jaco Pistorius is the tap version of Mr Pistorius, a sombre piece that contrasts favourably with Marcus's slap version of Jaco's trademark number Tin Town. Cleverly, Marcus has taken a classic track, paid his respect, and created a signature version in his own way, and at 3 minutes 23 he takes the track off on a tangent, with a funky finger style groove on a 5 string bass. 
Moons is another fretless tour de force and Marcus capably displays that those who think he's just a slap based monster are very much mistaken with a fine command of the instrument. Juju is an R&B funk pop workout that shows a more commercial side of Marcus's playing. The solo features some great envelope filter affected tones to make the solo stand out. The King Is Gone is a tribute to Miles Davis, who at the time of the album's release had only passed away some 18 months earlier. The track is certainly the most bebop jazz fueled track on the album and features Wayne Shorter on tenor and soprano saxophone. The Great Man's Death was still sorely felt. This album was released in 93, and yet listening with fresh ears even now, this album hasn't dated at all. The quality of the album shines through, and it is this that stamped Marcus's indelible footprint on the world of modern jazz. Listen and enjoy. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button below, hit the notification bell so that you get notifications when I post up new videos, and please give the video a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you have any comments regarding the album or the review, leave them below and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. Look forward to seeing you here again on Brooks's Bass Corner.